In this presentation, we're going to work a problem recording transactions to the Capital Projects Fund, the General Fund, and the government-wide activities. We are focusing in on different types of capital assets, how those capital assets should be recorded with regards to government-wide activities, Capital Projects Fund, and the General Fund. We're typically going to start off with the government-wide activities, take a look at a transaction, and then go to the related funds and see if there's going to be any activity within the related funds because the government-wide activities is going to be, as you can think of it, as the entity as a whole. It's going to be on an accrual basis and therefore be more familiar to us in this presentation, we will work an example problem related to the Capital Projects Fund, the General Fund, and the government-wide activities. Our focus is going to be on different types of capital assets, how to record those capital assets in the government-wide activities, and any related funds that will be affected, including the Capital Projects Fund and the General Fund. We're typically going to start out with the government-wide activities. You can think of that as the entity as a whole. The government-wide activities are going to be on an accrual basis and therefore more familiar to most people that have familiarity with the accrual basis. Then we'll take a look at the related fund accounts that might be recorded or have transactions related to these items as well. Them being on the modified accrual as we're looking at the governmental type of funds a modified accrual is going to be looking a little bit different so we can see the compare and contrast of the government wide activities with the accrual basis and the modified accrual with with the fund accounting so first transaction we have we're going to say that there's a donation a donation of land so land has been donated to the government when we think about that in the government wide activities we're going to record this as a whole we can think about this and say well of course the land then on an accrual basis has to go up we're going to increase the asset Typically, we would then increase an asset type of account. Now, if we look at the trial balance, what we're going to do is have our a trial balance, which is going to be in order assets in green, liabilities in orange, the equity or fund balance. It would be equity for a for-profit organization, assets minus liabilities, fund balance for the government-wide activities, light blue. What would be the income statement accounts or the temporary accounts? For a for-profit organization, income statement account, temporary accounts, those that would close out to the equity section in a for-profit organization, closing out basically to the fund balance here are going to be in the dark blue. The debits will be positive numbers, unbracketed, credits negative number, bracketed, and therefore the debits minus the credits will equal zero, and that's going to indicate that we're in balance with the green zero down below. If we were to record this transaction, we're going to say that then we're going to have the journal entry increasing land. Land is going to go up with a debit. Land has a debit balance account. We're going to increase it with a debit. The other side is going to go to some type of revenue account because we've got, in essence, revenue for the government through the donation. That's one source of, in essence, revenue for a governmental type of organization. We're going to put that into program re revenue and we're going to categorize it into culture and recreation and a capital grant so we're going to increase the land then if we post this out land the asset account increasing so we have a debit we're increasing the asset account and the ending balance then here then we're going to record some type of revenue account program revenue culture and recreation is going to be down here we're going to credit it and put that on the books in terms of the revenue now what we typically want to do is take this government-wide journal entry and then think about it and say well how is this going to affect the funds and we can think of the funds as kind of like the other modified accrual basis that we're going to basically be recording this information as of. When we think about the, the modified accrual basis, then we're not going to see anything on the modified accrual basis because we're recording a long-term uh, activity here. We're recording the land, which is a long-term asset. On the, on the uh, modified accrual basis, we're not going to be tracking long-term assets, and therefore we're not going to have it on either the, the general... Uh, fund or the capital projects fund because it's a long-term asset that is being uh, recorded so therefore general fund nothing happening so let's go back to the government-wide activities then and take a look at the next type of transaction we're going to have we have the sale of machinery so once again we're dealing with the the long-term assets the property plant and equipment type of assets the depreciable type of assets we're going to say what would happen if we sold the machinery for a general type of government activity sold the machinery well in the government wide activity we would have a similar process that we would think in a for-profit type of organization for the sale of machinery it would be on the books as an asset we're going to decrease the asset we're going to decrease the related accumulated depreciation to it and then we're going to see whatever cash we got for it that's going to increase the difference between the cash that we got for it and the book value the the value on the books minus the accumulated depreciation will be then the gain or loss 
In this case, it looks like this. We're going to say we got cash of the 5525 We're going to sell the machinery. It's on the books at $34,500. we are going to take it off the books. It has a debit balance on the books. We're going to credit it to remove it. Then we'll remove the related accumulated depreciation. It has a credit balance. Therefore, we're going to debit the accumulated depreciation. The difference between the cash and the book value is going to be, in this case, a loss. So we have the loss. This will be the normal type of transaction that we would kind of expect on an accrual basis in a for-profit organization. Cash then is going to go up. So here's the starting point. It increases. Here's the ending point. We have the equipment. So equipment is here. Here's the starting point. Debit. We credited it to make it go down because we're selling the equipment. There's the ending point. Then the accumulated depreciation. Here's the accumulated depreciation. It has a credit. We're making it go down with a debit. There's the ending point. And then, of course, the loss going to be some type of income statement account. There's the loss recorded in the temporary accounts. That, of course, puts us back in balance. Now, if we were to consider this same transaction with regards to the funds accounting, then we could say, well, if this was a general type of equipment, then it might affect the general fund. However, when we consider the general fund, we typically then want to take this journal entry and take it apart. Say, okay, what component of this journal entry might be recorded on one of the funds on a modified type of accrual basis? So if we take this type of journal entry, we're going to say, well, cash, that might be something that's going to affect the, the fund accounting. So we might have to put that into the general fund in this case. Then the equipment, however, and the related accumulated depreciation are not going to be in the fund accounting because they're not on the books for the general fund because the general fund being a governmental type of activity is on a modified accrual basis and therefore we're not tracking the long-term assets with it. So we're not going to be recording any of this business with the equipment. What we might just record is the fact that we got cash and the other side might be some type of revenue account. So it's going to look like this in terms of the general fund. We sold the general equipment. We're going to say, well, cash is going to go up. We're going to increase the cash. The other side's going to go to other financing sources, proceeds of the capital asset sale. And that's it. We're not going to decrease the capital assets. We're not tracking the capital assets because there's no capital assets on the books. Modified accrual basis. We're not tracking long-term activity. So we're going to say that then, then the cash, here's the beginning point. It's increasing. Here's the ending point. Other financing sources acting like a revenue account. We're going to call it, you know, it's a little bit different than a revenue account because it's an other financing source. But in essence, it's going to be acting like a revenue account in terms of the general fund increasing the dark blue type of area acting as a revenue type of account. Back to the government wide activities. Next item, we're going to say that we have a car lease for use. Now, the car lease is going to be, in essence, a capital lease. We're going to record the car lease as a capital lease. So we're considering, again, kind of a, a long term type of asset situation, some type of lease situation where we have a capital lease, this is going to be similar in the government wide activities, the entity as a whole, how would we record this? Well, we would put it on the books basically as a purchase, because we're going to say it's kind of like a capital lease. So in that case, then we're going to we're going to debit actually uh, machinery and equipment, we're going to put it in the machinery and equipment for the car. And then we're going to credit the a liability, kind of like if we purchased it for the capital lease. So it's going to look something like this, we're going to put the, the leased asset machinery and equipment on the books. We're going to say that we paid cash 1200 So that's going to, of course, decrease the cash account. And then we're going to say that the present value of the lease payments, because we're going to present value the lease payments and put it on the books as a liability, because in essence, we're saying that in substance, this is actually a purchase as opposed to the form, which is, is a lease. And therefore, we're going to record it as basically a purchase, putting the, the amount on the books as an asset. We're going to put the basically the lease, uh, the present value of the lease payments on as the liability. And of course, re record the cash that has been spent. So if we if we were to post this out, then we're going to say that the asset is here. We started at the uh, leased asset here. It's going to go up. So we'll increase the leased asset. Cash then being credited. Here's the starting point. Here's the decrease. Here's the ending point. And then uh, we have the payable and the payable is going to be down here. Here's the starting point. Here's the increase in the credit direction. Here's the ending point. Now, again, we want to take this and say, okay, what's going to happen on the fund level? Now, on the other side of it, basically on the fund accounting level, we're going to put this in the general fund saying this is general fund activity. 
And then we can take this apart and piece it apart and say, well, what would happen on a modified accrual type of basis? Well, on the modified accrual type of basis, we still have the cash that's going to be taking place in the general fund on the modified accrual basis. What we won't have is the lease asset machinery and equipment on the books as an asset because that's going to be a long-term asset as is the payable account. That's going to be a long-term liability. And therefore, those two aren't going to be on the modified accrual where we only typically have current assets and current liabilities. They're going to have to go somewhere else. What's it going to look like? General fund, then same transaction, different accounts. We're going to say that the expenditure, the, instead of putting it on the books as an asset, we're going to put it on the books as an expenditure at the 21.9. So there's the expenditure. Then the cash is still going down. Then instead of putting the payable on the books, we're going to have other financing sources which is going to be kind of like an expense or an expenditure. So you'll see that it'll, in essence, net out in the flow activity down here on what would be similar to the income statement type of, of accounts. So if we were to record this, then we're going to say that the expenditures are going, to, are going to go up. There's the expenditures increasing. Cash is going down. So cash goes down. That's going to be the same as with the government-wide activities. And then we have the other financing sources. Other financing sources here those increasing so the other financing sources going up and you can see these two basically in essence net out on what would be similar to the, like the income statement we have what is similar to a revenue type of account what is similar to an expense account those two then netting out on uh, what would be similar to the income statement accounts and what would be basically a net income type of calculation uh, if it were a for-profit type of organization let's now take a look at government-wide accounting uh, next item we're going to have, we're going to say that we have completed a capital project started in the prior year. So now we're going to consider a capital project. So this is something that we're building a long term type of item, another kind of format that property and equipment could take. Instead of us just purchasing general property and equipment, for example, we might then make something and have a capital project. Now the capital project, of course, is something that we might uh, track in a capital project fund as opposed to the general fund. We here then are gonna record it first, government-wide activities, that being on the accrual basis. Then we'll take that those journal entries apart and think about, well, how would that re be reported on the fund side of things, which in this case would be the capital project type fund. So first, we're gonna say that in this capital project, and it's being represented on the books as basically the work in process here. So we're basically saying, hey, there was a work in process last year related to the capital project. It takes a long time to make a building. And in, if we're talking about an accrual basis, what we do is kind of like a work in process type of setup or an accrual basis where we're going to a job cost system where we're going to put all the costs of the building into an asset account, not the building yet, but work in process because the building hasn't been completed. Then we'll take this, this information out of work in process, the amounts out of work in process and transfer them to the building once completed. So we have this on the books already. This is what's been working on uh, so far. Then we're going to consider what happens in the current year. Now, there's two things that are going to happen. One is we're going to have to finance the capital project in some way. So we're going to have some kind of financing for it. We're going to say that comes from a grant. So a grant is going to be kind of like a, a form of income to the governmental organization. That's going to be money coming in. So if we record the grant, then we're going to say that cash is going up. This is going to be grant money that we're getting for the capital project increasing debit to cash and the other side is going to go to the program revenues so if, if we record this out we're going to say cash is increasing the other side is going to go to the uh, program revenues now we're going to keep going on the the second portion which is going to be the expenditure and the government-wide activities but before we do if we consider just think about what's going to happen in the fund accounting it would look much the same we're going to say okay the cash is going to go up and the other side is going to be some type of revenue in the capital project fund because that's where we're going to track the flow on a modified accrual basis in the fund accounting next item we want to record in the government-wide activity however is going to be the current year expenditures so now we took we're going to expend money in order to make the building to put together the building we're going to say the construction working process is going to be the debit this would be typical kind of job cost system accrual type of system where we're increasing the asset capitalizing it and we're going to credit the cash so during this year we spent cash decreasing the cash and then the other side is going to go into the type of asset increasing the asset and then that's going to be the work in process in this case here's the beginning balance here's the ending balance for the work in process type of account 
Now, if we consider this account, then this transaction with regards to the fund accounting, you'll note that we're going to put this in the capital project fund, not the general fund, because we're going to track the capital project in the capital project fund as it's being constructed. However, it's on a modified accrual basis. Therefore, we're not going to put the, the amount on the books as a, an asset here. We might have to put it on a flow. So we might have the cash being affected, but the other side isn't going to be to a long-term asset type of account. So when we get to the capital projects, we'll, we'll take this apart and it's going to look a little bit different when we go to the fund accounting. And then finally, we're going to say that the project has been completed. And what we're going to say when it's completed is this is the amount that's in the construction work in process. We're going to take it out of work in process now that it's now done and not in process anymore. Move it to the final product, which is going to be the building account. So that's going to be a debit to building that's going to be a credit to construction work in process. So this is standard. Uh, this is work in process or job cost system. If, you, if you're not familiar with the job cost system, you can kind of follow it along. Uh, it makes sense that we're tracking basically the progress of the construction of the building in the assets, right? And now the assets have been done. Building's done. We're going to take it out of the construction work in process and move it to the building. Now, again, if you take this apart, move it to the fund accounting, what's going to happen in fund accounting? Well, you're not going to do this transaction because you didn't record the building on the books. You're not tracking long-term assets in the capital projects fund because it's on a modified accrual basis. And therefore, we don't have the long-term assets in the capital project fund. So general fund, nothing's happening there because this is going to be tracked in the capital projects fund because this is a capital project. So we set up a capital projects fund specific for it. And then within the capital projects fund, you'll recall we have the grant. So the grant's going to be increasing cash goes up revenue goes up very similar transaction that we saw in the government wide activities cash uh, starts here it's going to go up ending balance and then the revenues different name for the revenue account but revenue is increasing capital project fund so the capital project the fund side then looks very much like the government wide activity side then the next item we had was going to be the construction expenditures that's going to be the current year expenditures and the government wide activity, we debited work in process, which would then be capitalized as an asset part of the building. Here, we're going to debit construction expenditure because we're, we're tracking the, the track, the progress as it happens. So we're debiting an expenditure and then we're going to credit cash. So this one's going to be looking different, a lot different, right? Because we're on a modified accrual basis. So construction uh, expenditures is going to start here. We're going to increase that ending balance. And then cash, cash starts here, decreasing it. And then here's going to be the ending balance. Now we can think about depreciation. What about depreciation as we record these? When we think about capital assets, we have depreciation related to it. Let's think about depreciation related to the building. So if we were to depreciate the building under a normal accrual basis, as we would do in the government wide accounting, it being on a normal accrual basis, we could say, okay, if we had the 94.95340, that's what it's on the books for divided. Let's say it's a 30 year asset straight line basis. That would be for a year. We're going to say it's half year convention. So we're going to divide it by two. So let's just say that that's the depreciation that we have. How would we record that? Well, the normal kind of journal entry under an accrual basis would be that we would debit depreciation expense for the building and credit accumulated depreciation. And that would be the normal type of transaction. So we'd say, here's the building on the books for this. We're now going to record the contra asset account, the depreciation, the difference between the two then being the book value for the building. Other side then going to the depreciation expense down below. And so there we have that. That would be our normal type of transaction. What are we going to do with this on the, on the fund accounting? Well, the, the depreciation for the building, because it's the cap, the capital project possibly not being on the general fund because of that, but also not on either of the funds, general fund or capital project, because the depreciation is related to long-term asset. And therefore it's not going to be on the fund accounting, which isn't tracking long-term assets. It's on a modified accrual basis. Long-term assets aren't there. So we're not going to be dealing with the accrual transaction, the full accrual journal entry, the adjusting entry at the end of the time period related to depreciation for governmental type funds, including the capital project fund and the general fund, because they're on a modified accrual basis. So there's going to be no activity for the general fund or the capital project fund there. Next, we'll consider a situation. Well, what if we had a property plants and equipment that got impaired some way, it went down in value, it got damaged in some way, what's going to happen in, in that case, well, we're gonna have to write down in, in normal accrual accounting, we'd say, Oh, well, now, 
we've got to write it down to the to the value if the, if it's been impaired in some way this long term asset so we're going to say okay if it got impaired we're going to say that the the equipment that got impaired we need to decrease the value of it we're going to credit it it's not going to be on the books as a long term asset we're going to decrease the value of it the other side of it's going to have to be some type of expenditure related to the impairment so this would be a normal type of transaction we would think about in the government wide type of activity there's been an impairment we're going to say that the the equipment is going down so we're going to credit the machinery and equipment because it's now been decreased in value the other side then is going to go to some type of expenditure to recognize the fact of the decline in the value and the expense related to it if we think about this type of transaction with regard to a fund accounting whether it be the general fund or the capital project fund it's not going to be there because we don't have this on the books. We don't have the machinery and equipment on the books again because this is only on the books in the government-wide activity as a long-term asset because we're only recording modified accrual on the fund or governmental funds, including the capital project and general funds. And therefore, uh, we, we're not going to be able to record, we're not going to record the impairment of, of the capital assets on the fund accounting. So no activity in the general fund. Now, if we wanted to see this basically as a whole, basically going through just uh, the government-wide activity, here's the government-wide activity, here's the journal entries that uh, we have gone through. Here's gonna be our beginning balance. Here's our adjustments, which basically is gonna be the, all the, the journal entries here in the adjusting column and then the ending balance. So you can go through this and compare and contrast them out so uh if you wanted to see what was in cash however how did you get, how did we get to that 406 315 you can take this number and that's going to be the sum of this debit this credit to cash this debit to cash this credit to cash and and that's going to help be where the adjustment is so these are these are the the transactions in the government Y type of activity we also going to do this in a problem in excel so you can see how we actually put this together in a step-by-step -step process Here's the general fund. So you can see and compare and contrast the general fund in, in terms of as a whole here. And then we have the capital project fund. So you can same type of activity. Here's the journal entries. Here's the beginning balance adjustment and ending balance as a whole.